So, um, really great to welcome you all here today on a beautiful spring day. It's two days of spring now already here, uh, which is nicely seen. Mr. Dombrovskis, distinguished panelists, um, industry partners, um, um, colleagues, um, on behalf of the three Baltic associations that are the co-organizers of uh, this event, let me welcome you here today for what we really believe is a celebration, celebration of uh, the idea that we developed uh, nearly a year ago to uh, be part of the ongoing discussions at that point in time, the European Commission launching the FinTech consultation are preparing for it, and then um, us being able to um, pull together uh, the discussions in Latvia and across, uh, across Baltics, providing the input. And um, importantly, we are, uh, where to start? We really should be celebrating the uh, advanced technology that we are applying across the board for financial services in Latvia. And uh, not so often uh, we should absolutely celebrate where we are punching above the weight. And uh, currently it is the financial technology. And interestingly enough, a, uh, the largest proportion of startups in Latvia is in the financial technology space. Um, and uh, also the Baltic Corporation at, at this point in time is really a daily occurrence. Just to take this week, um, a few days ago, there was a Ministries of Finance meeting here in Riga to discuss the development of the Baltic capital markets, also an initiative supported by the European Commission. Um, just yesterday, there was a Baltic ACOMS chapter meeting in Vilnius discussing the uh, FinTech and AML issues, and we are great to have a few participants from that event here today as well, including our panelists. Um, and um, event here today and in a few weeks' time, a few more events in, in Vilnius uh, around the topics both of Baltic cooperation, the financial sector, and digital developments. So we are known as a startup region, and the denser the ecosystem here, the better we're plugged in with our immediate neighbors, um, the better we'll be able to exploit the entrepreneurial spirit for which we're also regarded quite highly. Now, what brings us to today, as I briefly mentioned, was the initiative that we undertook last year, where we really catalyze the discussion across the nine financial and related industry associations. And it was at the beginning of June that we jointly submitted these uh, inputs as a joint industry input uh, to Mr. Dombrovskis in person and uh, actually uh, recognize at that point in time that uh, I won't say that we are the only, but definitely not. The majority of European countries were able to really bring together the, um, the entire spectrum of tech financial technology partners to, uh, to come to these uh, joint positions. And we identified specific items that needed to be followed up in Latvia. And in fact, great to see we have an FCMC with an innovation sandbox here today, which we didn't have at the point of, uh, of uh, writing up and discussing these uh, aspects. And there are other, other issues that are in, in development. And we absolutely see Baltics um, as, a, as a good platform to develop further. And in particular in Latvia, if you look, we have over 70% of the customers covered by the banks that are um, fully embracing the PSD2 and open banking. Um, and this at the same time allows for the local fintechs to access um, 11 million market, which they otherwise would not be able to do. And uh, given the competence uh, that we have here in the market and, and the level of uh, services, we, we are looking at fully exploiting the opportunities that the initiatives that the commission is, is moving forward in terms of the banking union and, and the open service provision are, are, are giving us. And we, as the association and three Baltic associations, we are very much working to drive the discussions with the policymakers, 
to drive certain, um, certain discussions, also very much an awareness raising function that we see, um, and, um, and, and to be able to bring together the different stakeholders for the discussion of the changes that need to happen, and um, to have a clear vision. And for us, we've also been doing our homework over the last year. It was uh, December when at the Association of Latvian Commercial Banks, uh, at the council level, we approved the digital finance framework, really um, giving a, a vision and outlining the priorities of what we want to see achieved in 2018. And um, the goal, um, is really one of the goals is also to um, open up a much more structured platform for discussion among the different industry players, which is one of the goals today. Um, so to be able to uh, inform and drive the discussions here, and also importantly to be a, a, uh, a good inputter and, and a good provider of uh, ideas to our colleagues in the EU, understanding well um, that it is the region here that is in many ways driving what's, uh, what, will be, uh, what will be happening in terms of the financial innovation along with other, other front frontier um, market participants in other parts of the, uh, of the uh, Europe. Now, in terms of um, uh, the agenda today, let me quickly guide you through this. So we'll have shortly a uh, speech by Mr. Dombrovskis. Um, then we'll have presentations by um, our... Um, the way we've labeled disruptors, so to provide a bit of a challenge and, and early reflections on the EC initiative in a, in a short, focused, um, five-minute presentation mode. And um, as you see, we, uh, we are very much working on a, on a full equality in terms of the speakers across the range, which is another uh, trademark of, um, of, um, of the Baltics. And um, then, um, I'm um, absolutely amazed to have the, the panel that we have, have today, and let me uh, quickly introduce. Uh, so we have uh, Mr. Denis uh, Filipovs, uh, the Head of Payment Systems Policy uh, Division at uh, the Bank of Latvia, which is kindly co-sponsoring this event. We um, are happy to have Ms. Aya Zitzere join from the Ministry of Finance of Latvia. Uh, Marius Jurgilas uh, from the Bank of uh, Lithuania, um, Edmunds Belskis, who is the Deputy State Secretary, and to say simply the uh, the CIO for Latvia. Can I introduce that you that way, Mr. Belskis? Uh, uh, we are happy to have uh, Dirts Berzinc, who um, is also in the capacity here of a co-chairman of the Digital Transformation Committee at the Association of uh, Commercial Banks, and of course the head of Digital Strategy for Swedbank uh, Group. Um, we're happy to have our colleague from Lithuania, Thomas Vitkus, uh, the president of Infobalt Association and managing director, Tieto Lietuva, and um, Andra Altoa uh, from the SEB uh, Baltic Division uh, as head of strategy. So without further ado, I would um, welcome Mr. Dombrovskis for his introductory um, and keynote speech. Welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, first of all, uh, thank you for this uh, invitation to this uh, conference on the future of financial technology in the Baltics and in the EU. And I would like to thank the three organizing uh, banking associations of all three Baltic states of, uh, 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 for this conference for bringing together uh, public and private actors from across uh, Baltics. Uh, I'm always happy to discuss uh, finance and digital uh, uh, technology, and it's um, good that its uh, discussion is taking uh, place here in one of Europe's uh, fintech uh, hubs, and it makes us also optimistic about development of uh, this uh, uh, sector. Uh, let me start by saying that fintech is already a big job creator and source of innovation in Europe. On the recent ranking on the world's 100 most innovative fintechs, as many as 33 were from the EU. And within the EU, Baltics is in a forefront. Uh, this is linked to many uh, factors, uh, including the early adoption of digital technology, the uh, culture for startups and innovation, and a growing cross-border cooperation. Uh, um, uh, the successful and dynamic Estonian presidency in the EU Council was a particular example of a forward-looking attitude that uh, uh, they we held towards digital technology here in Baltics. 
And when it comes to the entrepreneurship and innovation, Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia are among the top seven in Europe according to the World Economic Forum. Uh, it is enough to look at many innovative and uh, successful Baltic fintech companies to see that this is uh, uh, true. There are way too many to name, so just to name a few, not to somehow sideline the others, but uh, say uh, 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 TransferWise, Estonian money transfer company, Mintos, Latvian peer-to-peer uh, -peer lending, or TransferGo, Lithuanian money transfer, are some examples of companies that are already operating across Europe and further afield. And I also welcome many proactive government initiatives in Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia to help seize uh, fintech opportunities. These have considerable potential for increasing innovation, attracting investment, and creating growth and jobs. But this is only uh, the beginning. To compete globally, digital innovators must be able to benefit from the full scale of EU single market. And at the same time, there are risks. As we have seen, um, the European Commission takes uh, very seriously any threat to the financial stability or investor protection. Uh, promoting fintech is also an important part of our work to complete the capital markets union. For example, it can facilitate cross-border transactions, diversify access to funding, and contribute to deeper and more integrated capital markets. Our goal, therefore, is to strike the balance between embracing the opportunities of new technologies while looking after customers and investors. Uh, recently, we have taken further steps. For example, at the beginning of January, the revised Payment Services Directive entered into application. It offers banks opportunities uh, alone or allied with fintechs to embrace the new digital landscape and better meet their uh, uh, customers' evolving needs, including across borders. Last year, we asked for feedback on how to best enable the dynamic EU fintech sector. We received many responses including a comprehensive letter from the Latvian banking and uh, fintech community, which we welcome and which Sandra was actually referring to in her introductory speech. Based on this feedback, we unveiled two weeks uh, ago our fintech action plan. It sets out a number of concrete steps for more innovative and compete, uh, competitive EU financial industry. Uh, in particular, it has three main goals, which I would like to cover today. First, to help innovative businesses, uh, business models to scale up across the single market. Second, to encourage the uptake of new technologies in the financial sector. And third, to increase cybersecurity. So let me start with supporting innovative business models. Digital financial services rely on volume, economies of scale, and network effects. So for Europe to succeed and lead in fintech, we need to make sure that our companies are able to grow and scale up in the EU. Crowdfunding is a very good example. Uh, in the EU27, the sector has grown by more than 100% in each year in the last three years. Uh, but due to the patchwork of national regulations, crowdfunding in Europe is usually contained within national borders. This uh, hinders platforms from reaching scale. This is why two weeks ago we put forward a legislative proposal for an EU license for crowdfunding. It would allow both lending and investment-based crowdfunding platforms to operate across the EU based on a single authorization. And it would eliminate the need to comply with 28 different sets of requirements. This would help platforms to scale up and offer more choice for investors and more opportunities for entrepreneurs to attract funding from across the EU. It may sound obvious, but you need a crowd to crowdfund. Uh, supervisors also play an important role in enabling innovation uh, among uh, financial companies. Some uh, 13 EU countries have already established innovation hubs or regulatory sandboxes, which have proved very effective both for companies and uh, supervisors. But we need uh, a more consistent approach across the single market. Early next year, we'll present a blueprint with best practices on regulatory uh, sandboxes. But by the way, I welcome very, uh, uh, very much the initiative which I just uh, uh, was able to see the uh, uh, sandbox of financial capital markets uh, uh, committee. 
let me move to the second goal of the, our action plan, which is to facilitate the uptake of new technologies. Uh, the financial sector is already number one user of digital technologies, uh, so it stands to benefit significantly from further innovation. Uh, our action plan contains various measures to facilitate this process. For example, we will set up an expert group to look into possible regulatory obstacles to financial innovation. Their main job will be to review those uh, EU rules that predate the emergence of digital technologies. Uh, we will also will, uh, establish EU FinTech Lab for supervisors to engage with technology providers in a natural uh, space. The aim is to raise the level of knowledge and, and, uh, 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 and understanding about new technologies. Uh, we are looking specifically at how to stimulate the adoption of certain technologies with high potential for breakthrough. One example is cloud computing, which is key to unlocking the efficiency gains from the big data analysis. Uh, today, here are obstacles hindering companies from using those services. In uh, particular, there are barriers to cross-border flow of data and inconsistent rules on the outsourcing of activities to the cloud. So we need to tackle these barriers. The upcoming general data protection regulation will help by establishing the free movement of personal data across the EU. And last year, the Commission came forward with additional proposals to remove data localization requirements. As part of our FinTech Action Plan, we will invite European supervisory authorities to explore the issuing of guidelines to facilitate the use of cloud services. We are also looking at blockchain and other applications for distributed ledger technologies uh, for the financial sector. Uh, to make these technologies a success for the economy, the Commission has established an EU blockchain observatory and forum. It will report on the challenges and opp opportunities of uh, crypto assets later this year. But we also need to confront the important risks of blockchain applications today. Cryptocurrency valuations show, uh, show all signs of the asset bubble and recent uh, uh, incidents of hacking have exposed safety weaknesses. Uh, the Commission has a duty to protect investors and consumers. So last December I asked the three European supervisory authorities to the, renew their warnings to the public, which they uh, recently did. Last month, I also organized a roundtable with experts from the public, private, and non-governmental sectors to assess the latest developments. We concluded on the need of further monitoring crypto assets and initial coin offerings. We stand ready to act if uh, necessary. We want Europe to embrace new technologies while being prepared to tackle risks. And we should also remember that EU represents only a small uh, uh, share of global blockchain developments and crypto assets trading in particular. Uh, borders are almost irrelevant in this respect, so we need to work together with our international partners, including in the G20. Uh, this uh, brings me to the third and last point of our action plan, which is to ensure the cyber resilience of the financial sector. Finance is better prepared than other sectors, but it's also the most frequent target, with 65% more attacks than in any other sector in 2016. Uh, we depend more and more on digital technology, so we need to keep improving our ability to withstand such attacks. And there are also uh, already good national initiatives in this uh, regard. Uh, rigorous testing to identify weaknesses is performed by experts to attempt breaking break in into bank systems, just like hackers would do, uh, and at the same time, strong cyber resilience requires a collective approach. So uh, there, uh, something which we want to avoid is proliferation of uh, many different testing requirements across uh, member states, so we su uh, support the efforts to develop an EU-wide testing framework. Uh, this year, we will organize a, pu a public-private workshop to address barriers to information sharing among market particip uh, participants on cyber threats. We have also asked the European supervisory authorities to consider issuing guidelines for how supervisors should deal with information technology risks and uh, advise the Commission on the need of potential legislation. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the Commission is also working to help European consumers and to promote cross-border retail financial services. 
This is part of our action plan on consumer financial uh, uh, services. Next week, we'll propose to make cross-border payments in euros uh, cheaper in non-euro countries. This will mean that these payments will be priced the same as domestic payments in national currency. For example, if someone in uh, Sweden is sending uh, 50 euros to Latvia nowadays, uh, transaction fees can easily go into dozens of uh, uh, euros. So that kind of uh, fees will not be longer required. This initiative and our FinTech action plan go in the same direction. They promote cross-border financial services, allowing better economies of scale for businesses and new opportunities for consumers and investors. On uh, FinTech, we are setting a clear direction for the Baltics and Europe to remain at the peak of global financial innovation, competition and consumer uh, friendliness, and I count on your support for working towards this goal. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Mr. Dombrovskis. So we'll now proceed to um, what we call the presentation by disruptors to a bit um, um, give the, the initial reflections and to prepare us for um, the discussion to continue. So the floor is Ms. Eva Grabe, um, the Chief Operating Officer of Nordigen. Um, hello everyone, my name is Zeva, I'm Head of Operations at Nordigen, and I'm here to represent one small piece of what FinTech is bringing to the financial industry. So what we do, uh, we help banks and lenders to use transaction data to improve credit scoring. Nordigen was founded in 2015 and we currently operate in 12 countries, most of which are in European Union. The banking, as we know it, is changing, and the financial market is becoming more competitive, innovative. The decisions should be made fast. And we believe that the financial institutions which choose to take advantages offered by FinTech could succeed in the future financial landscape. So how much exactly you have to know about me or my small or medium-sized enterprise before you decide to issue a loan to me? Uh, and it is also possible that I have no credit history at all. We believe that the quite accurate decision can be made based on my transaction data and that by analyzing my income and spending habits, you can get pretty valuable insight about me as a loan applicant. And this is where we can help. Um, our categorization engine, um, is built to recognize the transaction um, based on its description. And it was built to replace the manual bank statement analysis by a credit specialist. It pays attention to the same patterns, insights, and behaviors as the credit specialist would, just much faster and more precise. Uh, our behavioral scoring engine is built to identify risk-critical behaviors in categorized data and to calculate the probability of the default. Both of these tools help to save a lot of time. Uh, we offer cloud and on-site based solutions. Using on-site solution, the data never leaves banks' infrastructure, however, uh, Using cloud solution, the maintenance process, the setup process, and the customer support process is much easier. We currently use Amazon Web Services for the secure cloud hosting and data processing with servers located in Dublin. Uh, we understand the precaution of banks before making arrangements with startups, and therefore it is essential for us to, well, prove that we can bring some added value and that we take data security very seriously and that we are compliant with existing regulations. Efficiency is one of the key topics in almost every organization nowadays. So what will future bring to lending? 
we see two big changes in the market. First of all, account data has proved to be extremely valuable in credit scoring, plus it is much more available than the traditional credit bureau data. Second of all, credit bureaus are losing their relevance with the rise of alternative data and privacy concerns. Together with implementation of PSD2, uh, banks will have to provide access uh, to their account data through open APIs to the licensed third-party service providers. And uh, we see it as a next step for us how to expand and improve service we already offer and to provide those account information services. That would mean that we will have to obtain the account information service provider license, and this is one of the things why we are super happy about this Sandbox initiative. Um, we are looking forward to the, all of the, what the future will bring, and uh, we believe that innovative services should be also secure and regulated. Because all of them mentioned, we are super happy about the EC support and the initiative and the EU FinTech Action Plan. That's it from me. Thank you. Great. Thank you. So va value in being regulated, uh, that's a, a good message. So with that, um, I uh, want to welcome Ms. Kerli Gabrilovica, who is the uh, supervisory board member for the Association of Commercial Banks in Latvia. And importantly, after um, the com combining of two banks and now Luminor, in fact, the holder of the single largest uh, loan book in Latvia. So over to you. Thank you, Sandra. Uh, good day, everybody. Thank you for um, inviting me to talk here this, uh, today. And um, uh, yes, um, and the message what I would um, like to propose um, um, today here is that considering the size of Baltic financial markets, we believe that actually the best and in many areas probably the only way to effectively grow and innovate in financial sector is actually by cooperation. And um, why do we think so? Um, uh, we believe that Baltic countries is not actually probably the first choice for fintechs to come. Although we see there are a lot of fintech companies here, compared to many places in, uh, everywhere else in the world, probably it's, uh, uh, it's, it's a similar comparison or less. Um, and there are um, pretty understandable reasons for this. As for any economical entity, you would think of the market size, you would think what are they uh, margins in the markets and uh, and how strong are the existing uh, players. So if you look at the margins or like prices in, for example, daily banking in uh, Latvia, then uh, for example, Luminor uh, daily banking package, which includes both account, uh, number of transactions you can do on the card, costs something like 65 euro cents per month, which is not too much compared to many other markets. And um, and uh, also, as mentioned before, 99% or really like a, a prevalent uh, amount of transactions is actually happening either via internet bank or by cards. So again, uh, both consumers and actually companies present here in the financial services are very technologically advanced uh, in everyday banking uh, basis. <clears throat> and um, um, so um, it's a question then, if you want to set up a company here, what are your uh, potential upsides and how much you would need to invest to actually offer something significantly different uh, to the consumers. It is challenging times for banks as well. We have a high competition coming in from uh, both uh, incumbent players, but also from new players in the market, uh, from different industries, not just fintechs. Uh, there is a lot of regulatory changes and they come in uh, uh, day by day, uh, more and more, and uh, we need to uh, implement them and we are busy with uh, implementing those. And quite often our digital desire is actually bigger than the payoff potential, again considering the market size and the potential payoffs from the customers. So um, what we believe that both banks need fintech companies and fintech companies need banks here. And uh, we see that, we believe that banks are very good at being a one-stop shop. So we have a custom base. Um, we are having a needed scale. So uh, to offer stable growth opportunities, a higher resistance to market turbulences, 
And uh, fintechs on the other side are more agile, uh, they are more flexible innovation, they are more customer-centric quite often, and uh, they have uh, very good, let's say, uh, stellar expertise in certain fields. So, um, but we believe that we shouldn't be talking about or thinking in terms of banks versus fintechs, we should be actually thinking about banks and fintechs. So this is the Corporation 3.0. And, um, and uh, we believe that we can really help each other out um, and uh, that way we can be better and more competitive in, um, uh, all together. So um, what we think then is a new black belt in banking. So maxim of, maximization of digital services. Um, and that's in every um, aspect of the banking. I would say that right now it's mainly in uh, maybe just certain parts of the area and uh, also a lot about uh, making it more efficient and uh, digital as also uh, uh, was proposed by previous speaker. It's cloud, it's blockchain, artificial intelligence infrastructure, both in customer service, virtual reality. We see some of the new examples when there are already virtual branches in, um, and virtual ser people servicing clients in um, in US. And uh, it's very important that we have um, the innovation and product testing in a piloting mode available for this collaborative, collaborative environment, not just for fintechs or not just for uh, banks, but that this method or models or tools we put uh, in place, that they are actually created for, uh, for this collaboration mode. And, um, uh, and of course, for this to happen, um, we need also transparent and simple regulation of uh, compliance processes. Um, <clears throat> Sorry. So what we say that um, uh, traditional banking is not dead. We say it's on its way on the, uh, to great transformation. And, um, uh, and we believe innovation and partnership with uh, fintechs is a big part of it. And, um, and uh, while we support a lot of um, uh, changes and regulations, what is proposed by European Council, there is one thing by what we would say what characterizes the innovation. Innovation is something new. That means that, in a sense, that is something that hasn't happened before. So it's quite logical that there is no regulation to set it apart. So, so um, to a large extent, we could say that um, innovation will always be ahead of legislation. So uh, setting up this toolbox, setting up the methods for collaboration, to our, in our mind, is a good way to actually think ahead and um, build a uh, system and environment that would allow innovations that we are not probably even thinking of it today to happen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. And uh, now I'd like to um, give the floor to Ms. Flora, Flora Coleman, um, representing yet another way of looking at a transformed financial sector, a payment services provider with, it happens to be so, over 2 million customers. Uh, the total um, banking uh, client population in Latvia is at, at about 2.6 million at the end of uh, 2017. <laughs> so um, interestingly enough, a fintech that apparently is generating profit uh, for the second year now. So the floor is yours. Thank you for uh, some of our intro. Um, I'm going to talk about two things um, to introduce you to TransferWise, and some of you may be familiar, but perhaps to give you a bit of an update then. And then to talk about what is needed to help fintechs to thrive, um, particularly from a regulatory perspective, taking into account the fintech action plan. Um, so TransferWise is a financial company for people that live, travel, and work internationally. We were founded in 2010 and launched in 2011, uh, jointly in Estonia and in London. Um, and now we're operating around the world with more than 1,000 members of staff and with 60 nationalities. We have more than 2 million customers, and those customers are transferring uh, more than £1.5 billion per month, saving themselves £60 billion per month. And we cover 750 routes and offer 45 currencies. Um, so that means there are 67 countries that you can send money to and 42 countries that you can send money from. We have 100% year-on-year growth, and yes, we're very proud that last year we achieved profitability, and that will be continued. Um, and we're more on top of that, we launched our borderless accounts, which is a multi-currency account for people to send and spend um, anywhere around the world with debit cards that are currently available um, at the moment on a beta test, so if you ask us. 
Um, we're continuing to roll out our services worldwide, and it is our mission to make money sending as easy as possible, as easy as sending an email. It's got to be fast, easy, and cheap. So, what is needed for fintech regulation? Well, we're incredibly excited by the steps taken and the announcements recently from the Commission and the European Banking Authority. We are currently an e-money institution, that's our licensing, and this wouldn't exist, this uh, vibrant payment services of fintech in the EU were it not for forward-thinking regulation of the Payment Services Directive and the Electronic Money Directive, um, which we're urging other countries around the world to follow suit. Um, but not many people have taken up that challenge which means that Europe continues to be going ahead. We think three principles must guide the regulatory approach. Technology neutrality, proportionality, and integrity. And I'm so proud to see that in the action plan recently. In particular, we need, still need some progress in the following five areas. Online identification and verification, the standards applied for RegTech, a pan-EU market fostered, innovative regulation and supervision, and progress on data storage. Um, in terms of online ID, there's still a lack of harmonization across the European Union for the verification of consumers and differing approaches. What it means is that if you are regulated in a country that allows online verification, you can passport that service to multiple other consumers. And so every European consumer has access to digital verification, but it's only the countries that have chosen to allow it that follow, that manage to foster those fintechs. Um, more, uh, the next one is standards and the use of reg tech. Um, of course, the ultimate responsibility for KYC, know your customer, and customer due diligence should fall with the firm. But a unified approach from regulators across the EU and increased harmonization would help European consumers and fintechs to thrive across borders. Um, on a pan-EU market, we're looking for um, regulatory harmonization in a number of policy areas. Um, so we are very pleased to see the FinTech Action Plan address some of these, in particular anti-money laundering, credit, consumer protection, cybersecurity, and data protection. Increased harmonization is a great thing. So the implementation of GDPR will be very, very useful for all of FinTech and consumers. Innovative regulation and supervision. Uh, we desperately encourage regulators to foster growth and innovation by cooperating with innovators and by continuing to explore sandboxes and updating regulation to take into account emerging technologies possibly faster than traditional purposes uh, processes allow. And I think there's some really good examples we've seen from the Commission just now um, in the FinTech Action Plan. So in particular, updating MIFID II to take into account crowdfunding rather than waiting for a whole new directive. Um, for a bit of context, when the Payment Services Directive, PSD2, was being discussed, TransferWise barely had 200 employees and was not engaged with governments at all, and yet this piece of critical legislation, so we didn't have a voice on it at all, and actually uh, that's common for most fintechs. This legislation that's only hitting the market now, uh, most fintech firms who are deeply affected by it and could have had a voice didn't have the manpower to uh, address that effectively. So this is a really exciting uh, innovation from the Commission to actually amend the directives. Um, another thing is the EBA's FinTech Knowledge Hub, we also think is a very good idea as well. Uh, the last area we'd like to see further work to address is distributed ledger technology and cloud computing. Um, it's excellent to hear the Commission acknowledge that uh, modern businesses need to have multi-site storage to serve their customers effectively. Um, and we're welcoming the Commission's Blockchain Observatory and Forum and the efforts to ease the cross-border data flows. And we're looking to see how the GDPR lands, not just within the European Union, but also globally, as many of our customers are living overseas and outside of the EU. So in conclusion, a reminder of the areas where we'd like to see further developments are online identification and verification, the standards of RegTech, um, fostering a pan-EU market, innovative regulation and supervision, and data storage. Embracing FinTech has the opportunity to foster growth and financial inclusion and reduce costs and risk, something we can all agree is absolutely vital for the promotion. Uh, we thank the Vice President and the European Union for their excellent continued efforts to support FinTech. Great, great. 
So, uh, after the three presentations, which uh, have provided a mix of uh, banking and, and technology company perspectives on, on uh, the issues of where they would like to, to go further, um, and we've also heard the detailed outline of the, of the FinTech uh, action plan and um, some of the initial reflections, I uh, wanted to start with a question to Jirts. And in the capacity of a digital banking head for Swedbank and the uh, and the head of the digital transformation committee at the Association of, of Latvian Banks, is this initiative ambitious enough given the global trends? Very good question. Thank you, and thank you for starting with me. <laughs> but uh, I think that uh, this is great initiative and. Uh, and absolutely in time, uh, and actually in time of this week, because this week I think is uh, had one particular uh, event, and uh, this event was that uh, one of uh, uh, EU challengers uh, got uh, uh, two great investments, one from EU and one from China. What I mean, N26 getting investments uh, from Allianz, uh, one of big in insurance group, and Tencent, one of... Uh, challengers of us, and I think one of reasons uh, why we are at all speaking about this uh, fintech and banking agenda. Overall, I see that, uh, yes, we are approaching uh, one of the biggest changes in uh, uh, banking sector, maybe even since uh, Medici established the idea of Banco, this stellar desk, which is obviously gone in, man, in many banks, but uh, still banking is. And uh, banking uh, was around basically one idea. It was around trust. Uh, but I think today uh, we need to add one more thing, which is scale, uh, because what we see is that uh, banking or any industry is seriously challenged in Europe and challenged not only within Europe or not uh, in Europe. It's challenged by in uh, digital industry, we know, GAFA and BAT, which is Google, Apple, Facebook, Amazon and BAT is, and one T is exactly what has happened in Europe uh, uh, this week. And then if we speak about scale, I think that the ambition has to be even uh, higher. Uh, it's really uh, good to hear that in, in some aspects of industry we are already look, uh, speaking about EU-wide. And I think this should be as a trademark, EU-wide, not uh, maybe aligned, because aligned means that there are still some compromises, but uh, really, uh, really uh, EU-wide things, because this is the only way how we can really be competitive globally. And it's uh, really painful to uh, read some uh, observations that there are only uh, U.S. campus and, and uh, China campus, and where is uh, somebody who is forming at, at least a couple of letters from Europe, not so far. So uh, I think the scale is, is, is absolutely critical to move ahead and still uh, for Europeans be in direct customer relations, being uh, in direct customer relations, meeting customers directly, not uh, being supplier to somebody else only. Uh, and the way how to scale up, I think it's, uh, it's a no-brainer now. It's, uh, it's open banking for the banks. This is the only way how to scale up. And the scaling up in open banking, obviously, it, it has to be EU-wide. Uh, like uh, we uh, launch initiative in Swedbank uh, for accelerator of fintech companies, uh, and uh, it was no kind of preferences uh, preferring somebody, and it is... Unfortunately, or fortunately, only one company out of uh, nine is from Latvia. The rest is uh, from, from the rest of the Europe. So this, this market is, uh, is ready to be uh, Europe-wide, just uh, how good we are providing it. And uh, as Swedbank, uh, we try to be one bank operating in four home markets. Uh, but uh, this type of operation shows us as well some interesting nuances. We, have, uh, uh, we are a very secure bank because we have five seed belts. We have five regulators. Uh, we have uh, four in each country, and then we have uh, ECB. So, uh, yes, it's very secure to drive. It's five seat belts, but it takes time to fasten these seat belts. And uh, so, but uh, I think this is not only about us. This uh, shows as well agenda of fintech. If you start in one country. Perfect, you can have a regulatory sandbox and so on, but if in next country you need to start everything from scratch, it just does not fly, especially, again, let's remember, it's US and, and China who are uh, versus us. And then uh, still, I think, uh, second topic, we can't drop this trust topic. And uh, trust, it's about... Um, 
let's remember physics. I know it's a very popular discipline uh, recently. Uh, and uh, from physics, um, uh, the strength of ch some chain, it's, uh, it depends on the uh, strength of each link. And obviously, we are now speaking about uh, challenging current uh, value chain links. And then let's really double check, as in banking, let's double check for I's principle, how strong is, uh, it's, is each link who, which we are placing into this chain. Because at the end, this is, uh, this is not entertainment industry in which we are working. We cannot fail. And if uh, we fail, then uh, consequences are usually by far uh, more grave than in, 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 in entertainment industry. And I would say that we are maybe in banking uh, a bit closer to health, uh, health industries and entertainment. Also, maybe some couple of recent weeks in Latvia not suggest that one, but oh, <laughs> that's okay. But um, uh, I think we are closer to health industry. And then in health industry, obviously, as well, technologies are coming in. And then how about open hospitals? How about open access to customer information and so on? So yes, customer should be entitled to receive uh, his information wherever and whenever he goes to any uh, service provider. But I think in, in, in this case, we are somehow more carefully thinking how this whole chain uh, works. So my wish is that uh, we have the same uh, strong and trustful thinking about uh, those chains, what we are creating and maintaining. And that's not only about information security, it's sustainability of business model. Let's imagine that some, uh, some uh, link of chain uh, has uh, extremely high risk business model. Okay, we're, uh, suddenly we run out of uh, money faster than uh, we got scale. So uh, this link is broken, then basically the whole chain is broken. So uh, I, I think this is the thing what we need to remember, that the finance industry is not entertainment, and finance industry is very interlinked industry. And if some links are being broken, then we all see what are consequences, even if we are directly not, uh, not in that particular chain. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So um, one direction, then a bit of a contradiction. I'd say that we are open to the questions from the audience as well. We have two microphones, one on this side and the other on that side. So if there are any immediate, um, immediate wishes to jump in, please do, as we absolutely want this to be an industry, industry discussion. Um, Tiers did not, well, he answered the question, is this ambitious enough, essentially by saying that um, uh, we here don't, it, it's okay, it could be more ambitious. So I am tempted, I am tempted to ask Mr. Dombrovskis to take this one on um, in, in whether and, and what might have been the things that might have been discussed, um, but maybe did not make it uh, into the final action plan and maybe areas that will, will be explored further in, in arriving at the state of affairs that uh, Dirz was uh, mentioning that we, I think we're, what we hear here is that we're absolutely ready for a pan-EU type of a setup. Uh, now the question is how can we help drive this? Uh, what areas you see we should be focusing in, in, in various discussions to drive that agenda and uh, maybe what are the areas that uh, did not make it into the action plan? Well, <coughs> there... Yeah, Thanks. I need to switch it on. Well, uh, th thank you for this uh, question. I would say, uh, uh, of course, you can always uh, uh, wish uh, for more and uh, always uh, uh, may want to be more ambitious, but already uh, during this discussion we have heard already some uh, 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 words, some saying, okay, uh, good, uh, ambitious, could be more ambitious, some are saying, okay, let's use a bit of a caution on some of the aspects. Uh, so, and that was more or less the discussion which we had also in uh, Brussels when uh, preparing, uh, preparing this plan, and that was more or less the feedback which we are hearing from the public uh, consultation. Uh, but um, to give some uh, examples or uh, uh, possible uh, future direction, I was mentioning this issue of allowing uh, uh, fintechs to scale up across uh, Europe. And uh, so far, at least everyone seemed to be uh, agreeing that we need an uh, EU-wide framework for this. And uh, I was uh, uh, mentioning uh, concrete initiatives where we provide EU licensing uh, framework for crowdfunding, both equity and lending. Uh, so, when we discuss further developments in fintech, one can potentially think of 
other EU licensing uh, frameworks for fintech uh, companies to avoid this uh, national um, obligations. We will be very much willing to follow up uh, what comes out from uh, uh, this uh, work on uh, a blueprint from national asset management uh, companies, also uh, guidance from European supervisory uh, uh, authorities on uh, sandboxes. Maybe at a certain stage we can uh, discuss the need for EU-wide sandbox because in the financial sector, of course, uh, we know that regulation is uh, uh, largely determined by EU uh, requirements, so this could be some uh, potential next uh, uh, step. So I'm encouraged uh, from the reactions which I had heard uh, so far, uh, uh, welcoming the proposals which are on the table, action plan which is on the table. So this is just uh, to provide some uh, areas of uh, thinking and po possibly advancing this uh, uh, plan in the coming years. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I will now turn to Marius uh, Jurgilas, uh, and you've definitely been a very active many people that are so popular here in Latvia, as, as you are in your Minister of Finance, and uh, I think a certain parts of the industry are looking with envy in terms of the uh, direction you've taken. Now, the EU FinTech Action Plan actually, interestingly, takes a stance in saying that, um, in fact, not much of new additional regulation is needed, and it's much more around awareness raising, much more around further discussions, and, and not, um, not necessarily regulatory change immediately. What is your view uh, on, this, uh, on this approach and whether, uh, whether this will uh, ensure the level playing field is achieved across the EU? Um, thank you, Sandra, for this question, and uh, I'm very happy to be here, Vice President, very happy to congratulate you on the EU FinTech agenda. And uh, to answer your question, uh, um, I think we should be looking at the actions and not uh, empty, not empty, but just statements. And uh, what are the action? What is the action plan? The action plan is unification of cross-border FinTech activity, crowdfunding, peer-to-peer -peer lending, pan-European licensing, and things like that that cannot be implemented without legislative process. Um, talking about uh, things that uh, regulators are doing, I think we as regulators, we cannot afford not to innovate as well. And that is why I really commend the, the action plan bullet point on the regulatory sandboxes. Uh, and it's not because we are already doing that. I think in the geopolitical context, um, we are losing to the West. We already talked about that. And we are probably already lost to the East. Um, let's take one particular aspect, data privacy. Um, it might look that we are doing one step forward in Europe and two steps back with uh, GDPR. If you are a fintech company and you really want to engage in uh, high-intensive uh, private data analytics, the best place to be right now is in China. There is no data privacy. They couldn't care about those things. But we in Europe, as regulators, we're not only pro-innovation, we are there to preserve the values. And let me ask the audience here, how many of you think that you know, data privacy is not relevant? <coughs> I see no hands. Right? So we, also, we always need to have a, a balance. And uh, that is why the regulator himself needs to test the limits to understand how innovative processes can be implemented without breaking the values. We need to preserve those values that we stand for. Uh, also, regulators need to open up. If one of the results of the PSD2 implementation is uh, the current mode of operandus in the banking sector that is known by the name of open banking, where the banks are starting operating as platforms and the fintech companies are providing the innovative solutions which you bolt onto this platform, because let's face it, you know, people trust the banks, and that's okay. But fintech companies are much faster, much more agile. They are concentrating on single line 
businesses and they can innovate better. So that's an open banking model. Maybe the same can be applied to regulation. What about open central banking? We have 19 member states, 19 central banks, 19 supervisory authorities, everyone doing the same thing 19 times. We're talking about single capital market union, banking union, okay, it's a bit more political, but what about not doing it 19 times? Maybe someone can do it better and then we can scale it. So I'll, I'll leave it here. Um, uh, talking about the European Union uh, fintech uh, agenda, I need to focus on two bullet points which are really important for us uh, in Lithuania, which is the crowdfunding initiative, because uh, we have a national legislation in place and uh, many firms in our region are already operating and they are abiding by the regulation which is in place. So I really commend this initiative, but it's really important not to disrupt what is has been created already. Uh, in finance, standards are essential, but if you push for the standard, it should not disrupt something which is already in place. So that is why the second bullet point where the collaboration between the regulators is being advised, I really like this point, but I'm not sure how to do that, and that's my previous point. Maybe I'll finish with uh, one particular point where uh, there, is a, there was a recent election in, uh, in the country to the east of from here, and, and the president there collected the, the top bankers from the region, one alpha banker called uh, Greff, and they started talking together with the ministers about blockchain. And the bankers started explaining to the president what blockchain is about. And he stopped them and said, wait a second, why do we need this? How do we explain that to the public in Russia? We have everything. We have the metals, we have gold, we have everything. But the Stone Age did not end because there was a lack of stones. It ended because someone started using better technology. And the ones who will be using better technology will be controlling the rest. That is why we in Europe cannot afford not to innovate. Thank you. Thank you. Now, with the, um, with the focus on um, crowdfunding and some of the other aspects. I, I want to turn to uh, Ms. Zitzere uh, to ask her for the initial reflections on the EC action plan and uh, the takeaways. And how do you see this contributing to the developments in Latvia? I guess, for example, on the, on the issue of crowdfunding, the law is in draft in Latvia. It's not yet been passed, right? So again, some of the question whether we should wait or we should not wait. And uh, so over to you. Thank you, Zemana. Uh, at first, <coughs> I, I would like to say that the uh, Commission plan is very much welcome. It uh, facilitates innovation, allows scalability, and in the same time addresses the new risks specific to fintechs, like cyber risks. The only thing I could wish is actually only faster delivery. So. The only disappointment <laughs> was when I re read when I actually will be able to see this, but it's more like a wish than a complaint. Um, if we talk, up, talk about the cr uh, crowdfunding, actually the proposal by, by Commission is, um, from an industry point of view, the right way to do it. You have a single supervisor, single rules for whole Europe. And uh, but in the same time, uh, the biggest uh, challenge probably in the negotiation process will be the concerns of each specific member state, how to ensure uh, protection of uh, consumers and investors. Because there are already some, uh, many actually, regimes and, uh, and standards set at the level. And if you look at the proposal, it basically uh, uh, it's um, as a product. It's better selling. It's um, easy. It's um, it 
it doesn't allow uh, to put some additional requirements on a national level. So if I would be industry member, I would go for ESMA. And it's actually good. We, we want uh, good and competitive regulation for the industry. So the question will be how we will manage to agree on this uh, <coughs> same set of the um, same level of standard for whole Europe. Because usually when you can agree, you agree on minimal minimal harmonization, and then you cannot add anything. So that's the biggest challenge. So from this point of view, I, I could say that uh, the first feeling uh, reading this uh, regulations that, that I can send my draft directly to the bin. <laughs> it's such a good product. But uh, of course, we'll, uh, we'll go to the government and, pro uh, and deliver our proposal, because uh, the commission uh, proposal is not yet approved. So we will have to um, uh, offer something before that and uh, to continue this national uh, mm -hmm. uh, debate as well. And uh, two other things I would like to point out, which for me are, is the most important from the action plan, that would be um, evaluation of the current regulations if they are actually technology neutral and they allow all the new technologies. Because uh, at this point, as uh, policy makers, we have finally did it. We have uh, almost fully transposed all the after crisis regulation where we were aiming for better financial standards. So it's the right moment to look at this again. Does it also allows uh, further development. Mm -hmm. And uh, also unified application of the EU rules is very important. When, uh, from the point of the ministry, when we have discussions on any regulation on, uh, in the uh, council, the difficult part is cross-border service, uh, services, which actually means if that's the toughest Part, then there is still a lot of market fragmentation because everybody doesn't really believe their neighbors are doing this, uh, the good job. So there's a lot of work and I can only very much welcome this initiative. Mm -hmm. Great. So before we proceed, let me see if there are any, any questions from the uh, audience. Um, I actually think we've nicely come to the question we maybe hope we'd uh, circumvent, but which is the ESSAS, the European Supervisory Agencies, and, and, and the fragmentation um, that um, I uh, uh, nicely put out. Um, and uh, the, the Commission, not part of the FinTech, uh, not part of the FinTech Action Plan, but has been putting forward initiatives around the review of the European Supervisory Agency. So I think it would be uh, fantastic for this audience to hear the latest thinking around this and how you see um, these, these um, aspects um, evolving. Not the least, of course, um, over the, the past months or so, there's also been some discussion in, in Latvia around the re respective roles of, um, of different, uh, different uh, European supervisors. So um, I'd say, um, so what, what, what the future holds? Will we be able to move uh, to the world that Murray has described, which is a company in Lithuania deciding and opting for a regulator in uh, Amsterdam and a company from Amsterdam opting for a regulator in Latvia and vice versa, uh, or we will have a, a joint European regulation, a regulator? Well, uh, yeah. Yeah, so um, First, maybe to come uh, back to those uh, uh, questions on this EU-wide licensing uh, regime and what are the implications for uh, national uh, uh, regimes. So uh, first, it's uh, worth noting that what we are proposing basically for a cease uh, opt-in of companies in this European uh, regime. So if uh, companies want to operate under the national uh, regime, they can uh, continue to do so. So answer to Lithuania, it would not disrupt your law. Answer to Latvia, you can uh, continue to work on your draft law. Uh, it still uh, may come in uh, uh, handy. And in a case, uh, this is now a legislative proposal for, from the commission. We still have legislative process uh, uh, ahead of us, member states, European Parliament, and we know that uh, in the CEO legislation it rarely ends uh, up in exactly the same shape as it's uh, initially uh, proposed. So there is still some work uh, uh, to be done. Uh, then, um, uh, on, uh, and this is also partly the uh, uh, 
response to the question on faster delivery. Well, the delivery speeds are adjusted to the speeds of uh, EU uh, decision-making processes, including legislative decision-making uh, uh, processes. Then on review of European uh, uh, supervisory authorities, well, there's this uh, work, I would say, is already uh, well on track. Uh, European Commission already has um, uh, proposed this review some uh, time ago, and uh, probably the uh, guiding uh, principle which we want to ensure is uh, supervisory uh, convergence, uh, also in a context of uh, uh, Brexit. Uh, so there are... Um, uh, uh, several work strands in the review of European uh, uh, supervisory authorities. First, efficiency of uh, decision making by uh, 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 proposing to uh, set up those executive boards or executive sessions, uh, 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 in a sense, uh, moving from uh, 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 principles that it's uh, 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 just an assembly of national uh, uh, supervisors, that there is some more uh, streamlined uh, decision making uh, structures. Uh, there is a proposal to change the uh, financing model of European supervisory authorities, which would be partly industry, partly EU budget uh, co financed. And that must be said that industry don't like the uh, industry part and SS don't like the EU budget uh, co-financing part because it comes with all the fiscal discipline strings attached, but we think it's important also in this case. Um, uh, and uh, uh, then, uh, especially in a, a case, uh, well, uh, in case of all three authorities, there's more uh, 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 role uh, with relations to the third countries. It, uh, um, uh, we think it makes sense that European supervisory authorities has more role with the third uh, countries, so they also third countries have more uh, clear uh, counterpart in, ter uh, in terms of EU. Uh, and uh, in uh, case of ESMA, we also foresee certain uh, direct uh, powers, well, there we still have some discussions with the uh, uh, member states. So that's uh, the proposal which we had uh, uh, outlined, and those uh, discussions both in uh, Council and Parliament are currently uh, uh, ongoing, so we uh, hope to make um, uh, progress uh, in a due time. Mm -hmm. So this uh, seems to indicate that uh, a review of national arrangements for supervisory agencies is, is probably due uh, in due course uh, uh, for, for the member states as, as these arrangements proceed to actually be able to effectively, effectively collaborate. And before we proceed to kind of more of the technology session, let me see if anybody from the panel wants to add, um, add to this uh, topic or any, any questions from the, uh, from the audience. So, um, I, um, so let's uh, then move to, to more of the um, technological innovation side or the other aspects that are covered in the, um, in the FinTech Action Plan. And um, it's interesting, the, uh, the FinTech Action Plan in a nutshell, if you look at it and you mentioned it in the speech, identifies three transformative technologies. Um, that uh, when stand the Commission and the industry broadly believes will uh, lead to fundamental changes. Um, these are um, the, the cloud computing, which in fact, uh, I think in fact all three of our um, presenters mentioned as, as the way forward and they are experimenting to a certain extent already. The uh, artificial intelligence um, aspects, which we know from our event, for example, in Stockholm, uh, where we had the three uh, Baltic um, rep through country representatives, uh, we had a, quite an extensive sh session on the future of artificial intelligence and the, the blockchain. Um, so I wanted to turn to uh, Thomas uh, Vitkus. From your perspective, is there um, anything missing uh, from, from these areas of focus and, uh, and, um, and which areas, if any, of these you believe should be in focus in, in the Baltics? Thank you. Uh, it's a big pleasure for me to be here, I'm from technology company and representing an um, association of technology companies and it's still quite rare when technical people are in uh, banking people's surroundings. So it's a big pleasure and it most probably it's a big step forward for both industries. Uh, I'm excited by the plan itself, it's so technical, 
and I'm excited by, by, by your announcement because it was quite technical as well. We very rarely hear from politicians so technical uh, presentations. So most probably that's a big step forward already for, for Baltics and for European Union. Uh, and of course, the, I want to emphasize the cloud technologies for sure because it's a big enabler for technology companies to do more things, to do more things in a smart way. It's a big enabler for companies in Baltics too. I mean, it provides us opportunity, first of all, to use the best services worldwide and to get very fast and easy access to those technologies. I mean, the most fashionable, the newest technologies, they are cloud native, like Salesforce in a CRM area, like Workday in HR, I could mention more. They are cloud native. They will not do anything on site anymore. Even you wish, even you will insist. So to access those technologies, we need a regulation to empower that as well. So it's a beneficial for technology companies, for financial companies, and at the end of the day for FinTech, which is something in between. Um, so, of course, you all know the story about media business and about printed uh, media business and the Google and Facebook, we call them IT companies or technology companies. Even they don't compete with uh, IT companies. They compete with media companies. So that's a very interesting digital transformation. Sometimes we call IT companies somebody who is not in IT business an anymore or never was even intended to be in IT business. So there are a lot of changes. What I w want to link this idea with a statement that, you know, it's good that we have all those free technologies mentioned in the FinTech plan, and it, again, it's a big step forward. On the other hand, if it's already mentioned in the document which is created by you, most probably those technologies were around two or three years ago. So there is something new already and it's happening now. <coughs> what we all need, especially in Baltics, and I'm big fan of, and big fan and big believer that we can do great things here in Baltics. We need to find the way to to use that those technologies, and I think that's the only way is to try. And what we it's, it's a pleasure that the regulators are around as well. What we need regulators to allow. The fintech companies, we need to allow them to try. Some of them might make mistakes. <coughs> and that's the reason we need a regulator somewhere around the corner. But we need to let companies to try. We need to let to try fintech companies some technologies and some business models. And that's where the good things might happen. The more difficult discussion, and I trust uh, people from bank will support me, we need to let the banks to try new things as well. And it's a little bit more complicated, I believe, but we need to let them try some new things as well. New technologies and how those technologies could help them make even better business. So a lot of great things in the FinTech plan. On the other hand, I think we still need to, to keep trying new technologies, especially in Baltics where we are small, fast, and agile. So thank you mm -hmm. a lot for this initiative and I believe this fintech plan in a way is maybe a great initiative as well to to foster the innovations. Mm -hmm. Great. So we're on to maybe some of the uh, more sensitive topics in the background and um, I actually wanted to turn back to Marius on if, if you wanted to if you could perhaps talk us through your considerations around some of these aspects such as for example cloud policy how are you thinking about this because that's exactly maybe Thomas didn't didn't spell it out but these are some of these areas where it's around allowing uh, or not uh, thanks again for giving the opportunity to express my views uh, Yes, um, if we talk specifically about the cloud computing and uh, cloud-based banking, this is where the most important thing right now would be clarity. There are many firms who are treading the world and one of them was speaking on the stage to the left of you, transfer-wise, uh, if I would ask them what kind of core banking technology do they use and where are their, you know, service located, uh, I guess the answer would be somewhere in the cloud. 
but they would like to have that. Yes? And uh, other global regulators in Asia, they see the opportunities and uh, they are defining already clear, defined policies with regard to cloud computing. So if uh, I would had a chance to suggest another bullet point on the FinTech Action Plan, I would really focus on cloud computing and to make that clear, what should be our policy on cloud computing. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I would really uh, would like to have uh, the view from the Vice President is in finance, in finance is all about the identity. Why we're not pushing for single digital identity in Europe? Mm -hmm. Great, great. And I will, we'll take maybe one more round of, of um, intervention and we'll come to, um, and they come to Mr. Mr. Dombrovskis. So I wanted to, uh, with, with this uh, background, turn to our CIO of Latvia, uh, Mr. Belskis, um, um, and delve into some of these aspects. Um, and in fact, um, um, two sides of this. One is the question that Mario has just asked in terms of the uh, opportunities that you believe the ADAS gateway will be providing and whether we will actually be looking at a um, joint uh, or EU-wide, true EU-wide electronic identity, very portable, and in fact maybe looking at really a disruption on the side of the usage of public services. So I might like Latvian electronic identity or I might uh, decide that Sebastian's identity from Belgium is better and I, I opt for, for acquiring uh, a Spanish identity if that's easier, uh, easier to use. How far, how far off we are uh, from that, uh, that uh, level of development? Yeah, thank you very much. I'm honored to be here and uh, we, we appreciate uh, efforts of Commission presenting this action plan. Responding to your question, I'd like to uh, look at this uh, from two perspectives. One is a national and one is a cross-border perspective. And the government, uh, how can we support this innovation in uh, financial sector and other uh, uh, economy sectors as well by using some innovative technology as well in the governmental sector. It's one uh, perspective. And second one is how can we facilitate data exchange between uh, governmental registers and financial sectors giving you necessary information, access to data to make decisions based on data when you are dealing with customers. So in this context, on the national, uh, on the national level, we are now discussing and uh, we are very happy to say that cooperation with the commercial association, association with commercial banks is very fruitful and uh, the data exchange between financial sector in the uh, case of uh, money laundering uh, legislation and others between different registers is go good, but could be better. And now we are in the project where uh, commercial banks uh, will make somehow, uh, somehow a pilot project with the governmental uh, organizations where we try to exchange data between different registers on pilot base and we encourage uh, financial sector make uh, some kind of uh, unified integrator on side of the uh, on, on side of um, financial sector. At the same time, we improve and we will make even better governmental uh, information system integrator and then we have to connect, interconnect these uh, two integrators to have much better uh, data exchange between uh, government. So it's on the national level, but from the European perspective, when we have this good pilot project, we have to uh, look forward how can we do on uh, cross-border basis, how banks from Spain or other financial institutions have access to data they need to make uh, right decisions on the right uh, time. Concerning ADAS, ADAS uh, preliminary is uh, uh, proposed, uh, supposed uh, to deliver uh, access uh, to different e-services not for exchange uh, data between, uh, between different uh, registers. That's why uh, I think the plan to, uh, until the autumn uh, is very clear 
and uh, Latvia will be ready to make necessary technology improvement to give access uh, all European uh, citizens to necessary e-services in Latvia and vice versa. And we expect that it will be the same in uh, other other countries as well. So. Concerning new technologies, uh, Latvia as a, as a government of Latvia is approved uh, this cloud strategy as a governmental uh, intention to move necessary uh, all technologies to cloud. So we need next steps, uh, how can we move the governmental systems to the cloud? And it will be done step by step. Then the second uh, about the artificial intelligence, we. Uh, so this very good examples in Stockholm, how banks use uh, chatbots uh, as well. Now the few governmental organizations, for example, Enter Enterprise Register, they are piloting uh, artificial intelligence in public sector and will provide using also machine translating tools, also these services uh, for different languages of uh, European Union as well in the near future. So. Blockchain is very challenging. Concerning blockchain, actually, we we are waiting uh, proof of concept, not only in financial sector, but uh, if we speak about other sectors, other industries, we don't have a lot of uh, good examples where blockchain technology is uh, uh, used. So before we start to use blockchain for the public services or public databases, we have to evaluate uh, security data protection uh, issues and other important issues because we are speaking about uh, sensitive data of our uh, citizens. And concerning the unified identity in Europe, it's a very tricky question and when we discuss this issue, the first uh, opposition is uh, speaking about uh, national security. It's a national question because this identity for all people Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, for example. But uh, if we look for the longer perspective, we are uh, living in Europe, we are operating in single digital market, and it will be much, much easier to provide e-services uh, cross-border between different countries <coughs> if we move to so-called unified identity system. Thank you. Mm -hmm. On blockchain. <laughs> Actually, actually, it was very encouraging that the European Financial Transparency Gateway supposed to be built on blockchain, isn't it? So we need a very good example where technology is approved by a real application for public services. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody wants to add anything? Um, um, looking at um, a readiness to move forward, but also a good good level of caution as a uh, government uh, government representative should probably exhibit. We have a question from the uh, audience. Maybe you can also introduce yourself and then uh, please proceed to. Good afternoon, uh, Michael Piehoski. I'm a board member of the Eurofining Foundation. I would like to ask the panel about the importance of uh, this topic that I think Mr. Belsky uh, um, has touched on, the importance of data, understanding the data, and understanding of the regulatory data in particular, which is the lifeblood for fintech companies, uh, and the differences across them. And I believe that uh, around one and a half year ago in Bratislava, John Berrigan from DG Fisma spoke about an important uh, project of DG Fisma called the uh, Fitness Check, and particularly on the financial data standardization project, which looked at the harmonization, if I understood, uh, opportunities across the European legislation, across the different frameworks pertaining to the financial industry. So if I could ask Mr. Vice Commissioner to uh, comment on, on the importance of these initiatives, and also I would add to Mr. Versky's question on the European Financial Transparency Gateway, which I also understand is one of these proof of concepts that the Commission has, uh, has established in order to check how blockchain could be used to uh, deliver a platform to share regulatory data across the OEMs under Transparency Directive. Thank you. Great. So, Mr. Dombrovskis. Okay, maybe, um. uh, maybe let me uh, start by coming uh, back to some of the uh, points on a fintech action uh, plan. Uh, 
uh, and on cloud uh, computing. Uh, actually, uh, cloud computing is uh, part of the FinTech Action Plan. I was uh, talking it uh, also uh, in my uh, uh, speech. Uh, so the idea is that uh, we um, want to encourage the use of uh, uh, cloud computing, so we are uh, uh, hoping that uh, the problem will be partly addressed by uh, general data uh, protection uh, regulation, uh, partly by some additional measures which we are taking to remove uh, barriers for cross-border flow of data, and uh, partly by uh, uh, guidelines from the supervisory authorities <coughs> Uh, how this outsourcing of uh, uh, data should be uh, uh, regulated. Uh, because currently the problem is that uh, different countries, uh, different regulators apply different uh, uh, regimes and they are often uh, inconsistent. So we want uh, there that there are guidelines from uh, ESAS on how this outsourcing should be uh, done and then, uh, then it's uh, also uh, actually um, uh, 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 monitored by uh, uh, SS. So this is part of the uh, uh, plan on uh, digital uh, ID. Indeed, it's something which is discussed in a context of uh, uh, a digital single uh, uh, market, which is more in a uh, merit of uh, Vice President uh, Ansip from uh, Estonia. Uh, but uh, as uh, uh, Mr. Belsk already outlined, uh, we also face uh, certain uh, uh, resistance uh, from uh, some uh, member states which uh, see it as some kind of intrusion in their sovereignty and, and so. Uh, but uh, eventually I think it will be very important that we uh, move and we have this uh, indeed European digital uh, identity because that will be clear facilitator of all kind of uh, cross-border uh, uh, provision of services to, to the uh, citizens. Well, on uh, uh, fitness uh, check, you are probably referring to um, um, uh, to call for evidence, uh, which uh, uh, indeed we uh, carried out some uh, two years ago, and the um, uh, idea was to look at um, uh, EU uh, uh, post-crisis financial regulatory framework, and this uh, uh, was not limited to fintech, and actually primarily not about fintech, but about much broader banking, capital markets uh, uh, regulatory uh, framework to see what is a cumulative impact of all the different regulations and, and, and directives which had been put in place. Uh, to assess whether we can reach the same uh, uh, prudential goals in a more growth-friendly uh, ways, whether there are overlaps, whether there are unintended consequences, maybe there are still some gaps. Uh, and uh, uh, this uh, call for evidence has been uh, uh, completed, and also the European Commission has uh, uh, presented a report on this, and the approach which we are taking that now when we are coming with a uh, new pieces of uh, uh, legislation. Uh, we are incorporating also the feedback which we get from the call for evidence uh, in terms of uh, uh, proportionality of rules and uh, uh, terms of addressing uh, certain specific uh, issues. So this is now uh, being uh, 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 built in, in, in uh, regulatory proposals which we are putting out in the financial uh, sector uh, uh, regulation. Uh, well, then on uh, blockchain uh, 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 technologies and also this um, uh, transparency ga gateway, well, on blockchain I mentioned, uh, of course, also there we are uh, having it's a, uh, a more broad uh, initiative, uh, which I mentioned we are setting out a uh, blockchain observatory and uh, forum exactly to uh, monitor the development of blockchain, to uh, monitor possible uh, applications to facilitate uh, applications in different areas and once again it's not limited to uh, to fintech or financial uh, uh, sector uh, and uh, to uh, gather more uh, uh, knowledge and fam familiarity of working with blockchain uh, uh, technologies uh, among different uh, stakeholders including among regulators and uh, supervisors thank you thank you any other um, questions um well, so let us, um, I actually want to now go to um, Andra um, and um, to ask you, um, so we've now touched upon 
here and there a bit of the importance on standardization uh, in further digital, digital development of the financial services. And uh, there, when we prepared for the panel uh, discussion, we were um, talking through both the aspects that have already been mentioned, the uh, electronic ID and uh, also standardization of the APIs, the application programming interfaces as, as two crucial areas. And what I'm interested in, I think, for the audience and for the contribution to this discussion, how are you as a retail bank operating uh, across uh, Baltics dealing with uh, these issues related to standardization and keeping up with the various uh, threads of the discussions that are, are going on and then um, impacting the customers you, you, you service and what your expectations of the near-term development. Thank you, uh, thank you very much for this question. Uh, before I answer uh, this specific question about the standardization, I would like to reflect a bit uh, around uh, from where we started today about the trust towards uh, service providers. And it's very interesting to listen here, here how, how even in this auditorium we are sp uh, splitting ourselves or clustering ourselves to the, to the mature banks and fintechs. Uh, or the, the tech providers or different industries. And uh, I would like to just look, like uh, assure you or, or like uh, confirm that it's, it's a, uh, nowadays banks are coming, banks are also fintechs because we are in financial sector and we are heavily working on the technology. Uh, the second is that uh, banks are adopting two kind of methods, what the fintechs are using or the, the startup ecosystem is using. And, uh, and we listen, or heard a good presentation from the TransferWise. I remember that uh, a couple of years back, uh, the CFO of TransferWise came to SCB and, and uh, shared the story that they have um, grown so fast uh, that now they are starting to adopt the same procedures what the <laughs> bigger uh, bigger financial institutions are doing so I think it's it's about the scale uh, uh, size uh, it's about and and second um, component what was also mentioned here was about um, uh, what industry we are working in and I think it's extremely important to to realize banks are defining themselves as banks and we are regulated as as banks um, uh, to bring this uh, Facebook example and why why we see those troubles or wh why the Facebook is, is seeing those troubles uh, <coughs> currently, I think it's it's one of the core reasons uh, reasons is that they failed or denied to define themselves as a media industry. Uh, they were like an open platform, network platform. Uh, all the opinions were um, uh, allowed. But they didn't took this responsibility, what was needed to, uh, to be taken as a media industry, about the ethics, about uh, like a really like a bit of controlling uh, what kind of messages are going through. And this is the reason why they are facing today those uh, losses in values, which are equal to the uh, GDP, uh, double GDP of Estonia, for example. Uh, so this is the, the I, I would also like a sort of like a highlight that uh, either you are fintech or not, you need to uh, define yourself, uh, yourself in which industry you are working at and define it properly in order to keep the sustainable business which will last not a few years, but really like a years and, and, and uh, uh, tens of years or hundreds of years. Uh, and uh, from there, I'm also coming to this um, this standardization question, uh, um, quite a lot have been uh, uh, spoken about the collaboration and I think uh, the standardization is for the sake of collaboration, for the sake of uh, easier compatibility, uh, that uh, the access for the third parties or the stakeholders who would like to have the good collaboration and, and provide the services to the, to the public uh, commonly uh, in, in a collaboration would be easy, smooth enough. Uh, it's about repeatabili uh, repeatability, uh, that you can really scale your business model, that you can provide the service for one bank in Estonia or Latvia and the, uh, the second bank in, in Spain. So you can really uh, grow fast and for this reason the standardization is needed. And, and then the service quality. What kind of service quality those two counterparties are uh, like a sort of like a low or like a mm, securing to the, to, the, to the consumers. 
So this is the reason why the, why the standardization is needed. Currently, I would say that the standardization is led, especially when it comes to the, those um, APIs and open banking, <clears throat> and APIs also uh, um, what we are obliged to, to provide according to BSD2. Uh, this uh, standardization work is led by the, uh, by, by the market players. It's not regulated heavily. Now the waiting time is over. The RTS uh, documentation is published. Uh, we, we know what is there, but we also need to uh, understand that um, it's not specified uh, till the final, final end. Uh, there is still some room for the interpretation. Uh, we as a bank in SCB, we have taken the, the conscious decision to, to come out as soon as possible, uh, taking this risk that we are not 100% to the, the, to the Berlin Group standard or, or some other standards. Uh, the banks in, in Baltics uh, are Luckily, or I'm really glad to, to, to see that uh, um, uh, driving the, towards the Berlin Group standard, all of them, most of them. Uh, so in that sense, I'm not uh, concerned. But, but I think the market players or the third parties with, with whom we cooperate, they need to also understand that, that there will be like a version 1.5 and uh, version 2.0 and so forth. So this is kind of evolving process uh, where, where, the, where we are foreseeing also next standards upcoming. Mm -hmm. So to simplify this down, so for APIs, will we all have round? Um, circles on the plugs or uh, square uh, plugs. Uh, that's right. <laughs> or somewhere in the yeah. middle. Yeah. Uh, so, so that's what we are um, uh, discussing. I think for, um, actually would like to turn to Dennis uh, now. And you have the luxury of, of being the, uh, the, the, the speaker that can look at uh, all the other speakers having spoken. The introduction <coughs> that I'll give on um, the Bank of Latvia is that very clearly the Bank of Latvia has been uh, one of the drivers of the technological advancement here in the, in the banking and the payments industry. And uh, also very much taking a cross-sectoral view on many of these issues. And I think if one thing is clear, then the FinTech Action Plan is a masterpiece of, of cross-sectoral um, issues, and it's even difficult to say if it's not all the DGs that are engaged, then absolute majority if you look at the, at the details of the issues. So for me, it's, it would be great to hear, given that you've been engaged most heavily in the PSD2 in initiating the blockchain discussions here in Latvia, uh, driving the instant payments, what are your expectations um, and how do we um, take uh, forward and what are the next steps that you believe here in Latvia and in Baltics this EU fintech action plan? plan will enable. Thank you, Sandra. <coughs> so, uh, uh, first of all, I would like to say that actually Latvia's bank uh, uh, very welcomes uh, the EU co Commission FinTech Action Plan, and uh, we are especially happy to see their list of uh, actions um, aimed to promote uh, use of new technologies in financial services. Nevertheless, uh, being here uh, last speaker today, I would like to highlight that actually this is not only EU Commission FinTech Action Plan, it is a EU FinTech Action Plan and, and this delivers all of us new opportunities and at the same time we have to face and to, to solve a list of challenges. And uh, please let me elaborate more. Uh, first of all, we uh, as a central bank, and our, one of our basic tasks is uh, to promote smooth functioning of payment system. Well, I'm really proud to remind you that last year we became the first country in the Eurozone to launch instant payment infrastructure. So we had already in the, se in the first day several transactions and uh, we made the history. We were the first one. Um, by the end of the year, we actually reached the limit of 5,000 transactions per day and we became leaders again among those countries of the Eurozone who, who already uh, launched their systems. That's a great achievement and in our view, well, this infrastructure together with the PSD2 opportunities, this is a great basis for fintechs here in Latvia and in Baltics to start build new, uh, new effective solutions to, to deliver new positive user experience, new benefits to the users. Well, nevertheless, new challenges come from, from FinTech Action Plan. 
And um, for us, acting as well in a catalyst, catalyst role, where we try to facilitate development and improve efficiency of, of payment instruments, we had actually to extend our, our role and, uh, and our focus to, uh, to, to start look at uh, different payment instruments, ecosystems, and technologies as well. And this is something really challenging for us. And uh, actually, uh, moreover, the, the challenge comes with a, a need to improve our uh, contacts and our, uh, our uh, uh, approaches and uh, uh, the way how do we cooperate with different uh, public authorities because if we take, for example, blockchain or distributed ledger technology, it goes far beyond one particular financial area. And therefore, um, let's take one particular action coming from FinTech Action Plan. It's a great opportunity for member states to join the team of uh, most technology advanced countries and to lead uh, European development of, of new technological future. Well, and, um, and therefore, I, I I would like to thank the European Commission for such opportunity. I think it's a, it's a very unique opportunity, and therefore having <coughs> this uh, opportunity here to say that I would like to appeal to create a national forum in Latvia uh, that will involve responsible ministries, central bank, supervisory authority, and indeed private sector uh, who could support and uh, and. Co contribute to European Commission work and indeed to discuss to have a common understanding on blockchain potential and further indeed to promote its adoption in financial services and other economy services in Latvia. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Jits, I think you wanted to contribute. Yeah, a bit maybe of self-criticism as well towards myself that uh, and now looking what what we are discussing and, and what are kind of keywords, I think we and, and this is a risk of, of uh, such uh, action plan and regulations to maybe forgot of one uh, simple thing. It's uh, for whom and, and why we are doing all this. So it's usual story about customers. So how about customer? And, uh, and, 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 and in this case, I think we are extremely very much speaking about technologies and even some particular particular technologies. And I think no technology is religion and uh, no technology deserves to have its own Bible yeah, by legislation or so on. Uh, what deserves to have a Bible is maybe this final customer and what exactly we are solving. And, and, and I think this is a fundamental thing that uh, uh, are we solving technologies or are we solving particular needs of customers? And then through legislation and directives and regulations, I think we must address not technologies, but we must address what exactly we would like to fix for, for this uh, final customer, for a European citizen, what, what he will benefit out of it. This, and then technology is a tool, uh, not as a target. And, and, and this is very easy to mix because we love these new things which are kind of uh, comes in shape of technologies, but uh, that's not what makes uh, our life better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just very short comment that um, I think it's uh, like uh, the, the end user for whom we are developing those those solutions. But um, the question of trust and and um, uh, for the customers, it's uh, or the end users. There are two issues with the trust. First, to trust the technology to overcome this obstacle that the new technology you cannot adopt to this. But second is that at the end of the day. Um, whatever the technology is, the trust needs to be towards the service provider. And, and that's why it's, it's very, this is very interesting uh, like a, a corner here because if we are talking about robo-advisors or we are talking about digital-only banks, uh, the, the, the provider is not seen for the customers. And, and if really there is something going wrong and if there is no proper regulation in place, so the question is who is, who is covering the, the, the loss and, and the pain later on. So I think we need to really realize who is the provider behind the technology. I think it, one aspect that actually comes out of this is, is in fact the research that um, 
uh, in this case SEB has done, but I think very similar research by other banks as well, which is the level of importance that the businesses in Latvia, Estonia, and Lithuania accord to the digital uh, development and in the investments they need to make to get themselves uh, further and also related I and mean, if you look um, across the board the three Baltic countries in fact the businesses that are exporting um, the volumes are big uh, relative to the economy, but the number of businesses that are exporting are actually quite uh, small. So in, in some way, these two things are interlinked, and, uh, and um, both of uh, both SEB and, 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 and Swedbank um, are clearly in the forefront of serving the, the local businesses here. So it might actually be interesting to look and, and to take the idea that uh, Dennis mentioned in terms of creating much more of this awareness work um, that we need to do across the board uh, that we're doing today vis-a-vis uh, -vis ourselves and, and the Commission is doing vis-a-vis -vis ourselves, but also with the, with the final consumers, uh, with, with the client, as you say. So any reflections on this, for what else we can do to actually improve it? And the figures I have in front of me is that it's between um, 8 and 19 percent across the three Baltic countries. Only 8 to 19 percent of companies believe that uh, digital uh, is important for them in, in the coming years. That's far too little. We have um, uh, done research about uh, innovation readiness and how much the, the small and medium-sized enterprises are aware about the innovation, how eager they are to innovate. And it's pretty clear that then the kind of like a product innovation is much more simple to understand, the incremental improvements in the products. Uh, but it's also clear that if you're talking about the really like a trans, uh, transforming the business models uh, towards more digital and, and adoption to the new technologies by the usual SMEs, it's, it's quite hard for them and, and, and to really enable them to, first of all, understand, create awareness of, of, uh, of this, uh, that the, this need, uh, change is needed and then also to provide technical skills, uh, tools and so forth uh, to, to, to put them to the kind of growth mood more and more. Mm. Thomas, I see you wanted to come in. Yeah, I, it's uh, definitely interesting insights. I just have more question for myself and maybe for audience, especially the word trust was mentioned so many times. I think if we look in Baltics at least, I don't know if there is very formal statistics, but at least informal, uh, how the capital companies, how, how much capital they are raising and through which processes. I think there were very few IPOs here in Baltics lately, one or two. If we look how many I IKOs or ICOs, initial coin offerings we had here in Baltics, or they were initiated by people from Baltics. I think plenty, plenty. It's something outside of all the regulation at the moment. But I think we had 10 or 20 ICOs here in Baltics. I don't know, they registered most probably somewhere else, but We're not still, registered, as the case may be. Huge money, it's a blockchain behind. It is some people who can do smart contract Already they can do the ICO. They don't need to care about anything. For another interesting example I have, you know, if you're not on mobile now, you are not in the business at all. If you open your applications, nine out of 10 applications most probably, you can identify yourself with Facebook or with a Gmail. There is only one kind of application which will ask you to do something differently. At some stage, we will ask to picture your ID document. It's only one industry which has still this interesting uh, way of doing business. Two? Sorry. <laughs> if it's, uh, if you... But, yeah, if you agree with a lot of healthcare now, thanks to, to you, the healthcare things, and you have uploaded your application, they will not ask your ID. I think there is something around secrecy. Yeah, so we're getting going. I think I, I also have an obligation to keep us on time. Um, so that always goes with having uh, uh, a distinguished panel like this. So I'd actually um, uh, suggest that uh, we'd ask, uh, kindly ask Mr. Dombrovskis to give the final round of thoughts. That I will conclude and I'm sure we'll be um, absolutely happy to continue the discussion more informally as we've put many topics on the table. So. 
Well, uh, first of all, uh, once again, I would like to uh, thank you for uh, organizing this um, uh, conference, organizing this uh, uh, discussion, and I would say it uh, shows uh, how uh, um, topical this uh, issue of uh, uh, fintech is. And uh, uh, first of all, I'm indeed uh, encouraged by uh, overall a positive reception of our fintech action plan but it also uh, shows that there are many avenues uh, still to be explored, many issues still to be dealt with, and as it was highlighted, uh, if it's in EU documents already, it may be something which is already at least two years old, so uh, life is moving uh, forward, and uh, we as regulators and also supervisors and other institutions need to uh, keep in pace with times and need to be able also to adjust the changing world and uh, uh, around us so that we are able to uh, react on new technological uh, uh, developments for benefit of our economy and for benefit of our citizens. Thank you very much. Thank you. And let me um, try to conclude. And I think, uh, I think we have... Uh, uh, we have one of these uh, very strict regulations being enforced here at the Bank of Latvia that the computer will uh, reboot in 10 minutes exactly at 5 p.m., which means it will install the updates. Um, so, um, the... Um, and uh, apparently I'm not able to move, move this forward. So what I really wanted to do in, in uh, uh, wrapping up and, and closing, say that we really see this as a, as a milestone in the engagement that we've uh, had throughout the year with uh, our uh, partners across the Baltics, uh, with our partners here in Latvia, the uh, eight other uh, industry uh, associations, Starten, Chamber of Commerce, uh, uh, LICTA, uh, the IT Association, um, the... Um, Okay, let's see if I'm succeeding. Apparently, must have switched on in some other way. Um, maybe you can help me move the slide forward. Um, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, the Payments Association, um, uh, the, uh, the uh, Risk Capital Association, the Insurance Association. So this was the group that came together and, and prepared. And we have now have commitment from our Baltic partners as well that we, we do absolutely want to maintain this opportunity to engage in, a, uh, in the discussion uh, that is, as, as we discussed, very cross-sectoral um, and uh, to be closer to the decision making as we are today. In fact, we are among the first in Europe that have a luxury of um, having Mr. Dombrovskis in uh, an industry discussion uh, around the FinTech Action Plan, which we appreciate a lot. And in fact, the drive from the uh, Association of Latvian Commercial Banks across the range of priorities we have is to shorten the gap uh, in, in terms of us being at the discussions when they happen or even before they happen, before they finalize. And a big partner for us in this is also the European and Banking Federation, so tremendous thanks for Sebastian being here as well um, as well today. And um, not the least, I absolutely wanted to say thanks to my um, <coughs> counterparts, uh, Mantas, uh, who is here, and Katrin, who is in another event in, in Tallinn, but it's very much a joint effort. And I'd say also importantly uh, motivated by our shareholders, if you will, uh, that have very much a pan-Baltic uh, perspective altogether. So more to come on this, and uh, important to... Um, to really thank the supporters for the event today, uh, Latvia's Bank, at the premises of which we are, um, Swedbank and Alex um, Klavinch, without uh, whose support this this event would not have um, would not have happened. And uh, we, um, as I said, our my task is to to finish on time. Not the least, the computer is rebooting. Um, but the uh, really, we'll, we we do look forward to continuing the networking, and uh, we we'll look forward to, in fact, writing up some of the proposals, discussions, and finding a way for all of us jointly to be well represented in the number of discussions that will be taking place around the FinTech Action Plan as it moves forward. So, tremendous thanks to all and uh, great to see you here.